the Fresh Prince of Midair, Trey Miguel. Too sick for this world, Zachary Wentz. And the Cardiac Kid, Desmond Xavier. And we are The, the Rascals. Rascals. And you are listening to Total Nonstop Impact Podcast, baby. Woo! Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent on my tantalizing co-host, J-Bone. J-Bone, say hello to the people. <laughs> tantalizing. Analyzing. You know, I had a different one in mind. I had a different one. I'm going to say it for next week because it was in my head, and I, I went to tantalizing. I had a whole different one in mind. And remember, everybody, a different, a different... Uh, a different uh, adjective to describe J-Bone, a different awkward adjective to describe J-Bone every week from here on out. That's what we're going to do. J-Bone, I, I you tell you, th- no one makes me feel more welcome and more sexy in the podcast world than, <laughs> than Trent. <laughs> <laughs> this is a married man talking, guys. Well, listen, J-Bone, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a relationship. I know how to, I've been married. You know, I've done that whole d- song and dance. I know how to keep the... Uh, I know how to how to how to keep the people happy and how to how to charm, if you will. You know, what I mean, my girlfriend's very charmed by me, so I know how to charm you too. I mean, what the hell? Maybe you're blushing. Just, just, just. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, Jay Bun, take two. How you, <laughs> how you doing? Um, oh man, dude, let me tell you, I'm I'm a little I'm a little fried, but I'm here, man. Um, very nice. A l- lot of driving uh, this weekend, more mm-hmm. than usual which wears on me wife had knee replacement surgery on yeah, Friday. Tough. She came home Sunday. She's, she's a trooper, a uh, long road to recovery, but she's doing, Mrs. J bone is doing well. And, um, so I missed a majority of the shows this weekend. I caught little tiny bits and pieces, literally. Same. Yeah. I, I saw the weekly, but the operation override victory road and the, Lucha show. I all, I saw bits of all because I had a, I had a busy weekend. I have to catch up on those. Maybe we can get into those at some point. But we're here for the weekly. Yes. That's the main thing is the weekly show. That's what we got to do. So we're always going to cover the weekly. We'll touch on maybe some big things out of you know that came out of the other shows. Maybe just mention a few little things. We don't want to get too deep in them because uh, I think it's not fair since we didn't watch them all. We shouldn't fully review them. I'll just touch on a few bullet points, but uh, yeah. we'll go from there. Yeah. So Mr. J Bones doing okay. Mrs. Bones doing better. She's home. She's recovering. Uh, Very nice. You know, physical therapy's going. We got that in full gear. Uh, yeah. Very nice. And she's she's getting around. She's man. It's hard to keep that woman down. She is tough. <laughs> she is my rock. Let me tell you, but Very she's, nice, man. Yeah. Very nice. That's awesome. Good for you, Jay. Good for you. guys. Look at that, Jay. Mrs. Mrs. J Bones, a very very lovely lady. She puts up with this guy, and she's she's a good she's a rock for him. Very nice, Jay. I'm glad to she, hear. She she puts up with my tantalizing ass. <laughs> Your tantalizing ass. Well, that's why she puts up because tantalizing. But we're here to tantalize our listeners, the loungers, Jay, if you will. We're gonna here to talk about the September thirteenth. 2019 episode of Impact Wrestling that took place from Fronton, Mexico. We're gonna break that down. We're gonna get into it. But Jay, the week uh, it was a rough week though. Let's let's before we get into wrestling. Yeah. You know we're entertainment guys. Um, rough week, huh? In the world of entertainment, not wrestling. But uh, we lost two musical rock and roll icons this week. Oh, Eddie man. Money, Rick Ocasek. Yeah. Of the Cars. Rough week, man. I mean, we're music guys. You and I, Jay. Now, side note, guys. Jay just launched a new podcast called J Bones Jukebox, Jacked J- Up Jukebox. J Bones Jacked Up Jukebox. J J three J's, yeah. Triple um, J over here. Yeah. <laughs> first episode is featuring me. If you haven't checked it out, Jay, where can they find it? They can find it over on well, two places. Uh, yeah. A part of the launch was on my YouTube channel, just to help, you know. People put literally put eyes on it, you know, but uh, all future episodes, including the first episode, you can find over on anchor.fm forward slash smash this podcast. So uh, there you go. And uh, that is the home of uh, J Bones Jacked Up Jukebox. It's music related. Uh, anything uh, newsworthy, I feel like talking about classic rock, the stuff I love, some modern rock. Even the some odd things in between, 
you never know what you're going to get on there. So uh, if you love music and, uh, well, you know, you don't have to be my age to appreciate my kind of music, but, you know. Don't no, you, you don't know. have to be. Well, check it out. First episode's featured me. Yes. Me. I'm vain for myself. I, I love it. Trent's talking, on there talking about his history in the Chicago music scene with Talking the about Hemi. Hemi. Official Hemi uh, merchandise. And their Hemi road. Music their, yes. Cheap look. Their road to uh, Bound for Glory weekend with Impact Wrestling at the All Glory event. He talks about that, and he also talks about other stuff that he loves in the world of music. So, yeah, it's just, uh, it's it was actually me getting to know my buddy Trent here a lot better, you know? That's true. We got to know each other a little more. And, and Jay, I want to show you something, speaking of that. Um, here, what a trip this is for a guy like me who's an Impact guy, right? When I, this weekend... I, they did it twice, but I want to go back to this weekend. Impact now, there might take me a second because they had a busy weekend. But Saturday, Impact Wrestling. So I'm going to go back to Saturday. If you guys have, you know, if you guys are following Impact, which you should be, um, actually, I think I might have screenshotted. I'm going to show you guys on the screenshot. Oh, here we go. Hang on. I got to go to Saturday because this was pretty cool on uh, Impact's Twitter feed at ImpactWrestling.com. I should have pulled this up beforehand. Now this is very unprofessional of me, but I just ah, thought of it. Right. I just thought of it. And, you know, the loungers like when we talk. So, here, look at this now, guys. On Impact's Twitter, what a trip this is. I mean, they retweeted, you know, and there's there I am right there. You know, if you could see that. It's a little uh, fuzzy, but you can tell. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There it is. You know what I mean? Im- yep, Impact be. tweeted, t- retweeted a Hemi post. Nice. Now, Jay, I followed this company from show number one. I've tried to get my music on here. For 15 years, we started a year after Impact, and to see that, you know, it's pretty true. And then right there, if you guys look behind me, right there, that's the contract we signed right there for the for um, Decay for Rebellion. Nice. I got the other one. I got the other one. I got a frame there too. But that's a proud accomplishment for me, Jay. That you have is, to get on there. That <laughs> so is, I like that. That is tremendous, man. That is. So that's up there, right there on the wall. I, I changed my view a little bit, Jay. My better side. I got my <laughs> albums in the back. I got more stuff on the walls. <laughs> Better angle. Better, much better angle. I like it. I, got, I like it. Yeah. We're going to go with this angle. I got my new light I showed you about, so hopefully the loungers can see me more, a little more in HD with my new ring light here. You, not, even, not, you even have one of your big fans right there with you behind you. Yeah, literally. A big fan. <laughs> this is my biggest fan right there. God damn it, the fan. I left the fan in the room. <laughs> Shit. But, uh... <laughs> Can't hear it. It's all good, man. Can't all right, we're good. We're good. We're good. But, Jay... What else is going on? We got the jukebox in there, so that's that's new this week. We talked about these guys passing. That that's a Gee, bummer, look, you know. I want to talk about. Uh, we can. I want to run down the Bound for Glory card that we have so far. So but, far, let's but, go ahead. But before we do that, I want to talk about someone. Like I'm not doing spoilers, okay? I'm big okay. on that. And like I said, we didn't watch the shows fully. Um, but the Hulu show. That aired on Sunday from Madison Square Garden's Hulu Theater. Yes. Let's just call it MSG, man. It's just so much cooler. It's part um, of MSG, yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's not it the is. big room. It's, it's a different room in the MSG, but it's in Madison Square Garden. That's all they had along ringside was MSG, you know? It's it was, an MSG room. That's what it is. It is. It's the facility. Yep. Um, number one, that crowd looked incredible. How that room is there? cool. 3,000. 3K was the was what I was told. That's the same room my sister had her graduation in because she went to college in New York. I've been in that room. There used to be an annex room back in the day. It used to be the other theater. They used to have like overrun and they used to close circuit in there at one time. But that's my sister had her graduation in that room. So I've been to that room. Wow. Yeah. Nice. It's um, cool. It's a cool room. It's a very cool room. I, we found out today, and I, I forgot to tell you this. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this or not. Access TV is going to broadcast AAA Lucha Invades New York on September 20th, this coming Friday. Now, that's kind of weird to me, Jay, because they're going to play. They just made people pay for it, but now now they're going to play for free. That's kind of weird. Now, I wonder what's up with that. I'm a little confused on that. Do you know any details what that's all about? I imagine BQ will will have a breakdown on that at some point. But do we have any insight? It is... I mean, if you looked at what they had across the background during the show, a lot of people took pictures of this. It would show the big logos of, like, Fight TV, AAA, 
Mm-hmm. Impact Wrestling. It was like this c- cycle of big logos. They would flash up on the big screen back there. And one of them was the El Rey Network. I don't know what to think about oh. that. I, I heard that the El Rey Network is going to start doing AAA shows. I haven't heard any news bits about that, though. There's so El Rey is done with Lucha Underground? Is that finished? It's it's got, It's it's a Hollywood fight now, unfortunately. MGM, oh, is, MGM is fighting um, who, whoever, you know, the El Rey Network. Um, it's w- whatever two big entertainment things were involved, MGM and whatever else. Viacom? Was it Viacom? I can't remember who else. I forget. But okay. it's, it's, it's basically got buried in a big Hollywood fight. And, mm. it's, and that's the difference because, you know, people still consider that a wrestling company. It's not. It's a TV show. Yeah, it's totally and that's, a TV show. And that's where things got ugly. And the whole contract situation with that got ugly, too. Mm. They never should have put those wrestlers under those kind of contracts. That's what, Weird contract, yeah. I, that's what killed it. Well, if they stayed consistent with it, it'd be different. If you're constantly getting paid for something that's getting aired, but the breaks and everything else just killed it. But anyways, um, so yeah, Access TV is going to air the special that was just on Sunday, uh, mm-hmm. Friday, Friday uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, what's interesting is I went on my cable. I have Access TV. I watch some of their shows on there, like the WOW and sometimes the New Japan stuff. Um, well, the concerts, too. The Access Music is phenomenal, oh, it's too. it's a rock and wrestling channel, man. For yeah. anyone it's my age, made it's for awesome. guys like us. <laughs> Jeez Louise, it's awesome. It really is. Rock and wrestling. That's fantastic. And what's on there in that time slot is Rocky Two. No, oh, really? So they're going to have to move some shit around if they want to put that on there. And I don't know exactly how long they're going to air this special or what matches they're all going to show on there. They're going to show them all, the whole special, just featured a few of them. I don't know. But nonetheless, mm. um, that's pretty exciting. Okay. And one guy, now they, they don't put it in the promo here, but I want to talk about him for a minute because he could be end up having a future with Impact Wrestling. Okay. And that is the gentleman who is... Now, I'm not going to do spoilers as far as who won the match and stuff like that. The first match of this special here was Masquerita Sagrada. People should know him from uh, Lucha Big name. Underground. And Chris Dickinson versus Dave the Clown and Demas. Chris Dickinson recently was with Evolve. Okay. Big on their tag team scene with Jaka. Oh, really? Okay. And um, I thought for sure that was going to be a team that would end up in NXT or WWE or whatever, you know? Right. Considering Evolve is like the back door to going there. Um, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just, you know, it's like, hey, it's, you know, if you're in there, there's a good chance you could end up in there, you know, because they work very closely with NXT and Triple H. Gotcha, uh, yeah. Who's the guy that runs... Gabe Sapolsky is uh, running you, Evolve. Gabe, yeah, Gabe. He was Paul Heyman's apprentice back in the ECW days. That's he was a he was a gopher for ECW. Kind of learned his craft under there, and he's been around. He did Dragon Gate USA. I mean, Gabe Sapolsky is also a co-founder of Ring of Honor with yes. Rob Feinstein. They were the two guys to start. So he's been around. Um, Gabe Sapolsky is uh, he's been around a long time. There's a lot of people who either love him or hate him. A lot of well, mixed I've, I've heard I've heard both. Yeah. I, ask, uh, Ch- ask Ethan Page about him. He loves him. In no. Chicago, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of mixed. Uh he's had some beef with the AAW where I work. Uh, I've never had a personal anything with him. Yeah. But the guys and the crew have had their differences. So Gabe's got some ups and downs. I said I the most interaction I have with Gabe is I bought a um a Ring of Honor Japan tour track jacket from him oh. uh, back when he was running Dragon Gate USA. Oh, wow. It's an original one. It's got the track jacket of the Ring of Honor, Japanese logo and everything. 
from about 2009, I think. But uh, that's my interaction with Gabe. <laughs> wow. But, so, uh, so, yeah, Chris Dickinson, uh, his future is wide open. And the fact that he was on this show could mean anything. That, that's interesting. Yeah. Because that could mean impact. I mean, that that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, his, he, it's an exciting a, time. It is. Because people are making moves. Um, I just saw another one from Ring of Honor, Shane. There. Oh, uh, Shane Taylor. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if that one's legit or not. Something about they just bought out his contract because he, he's done with them or something. Oh, wow. Something. I was so, never a big Shane, fan of Shane Taylor, but he can work, and that's about it. But that's, that's I guess, what matters. But um, The guy's in much better shape now than he was a few years really? ago. Really? I haven't oh, seen him in a while. He was yeah. in terrible shape before. He is really getting into shape. He was in, a, he was in the tag team with uh, Keith Lee. That's where I first saw him. That's where it was. Yeah, it was him and Keith. Wow. Interesting, man. A lot of this time, the Access era that's about to start is a very interesting time in Impact Wrestling because it's you're gonna have that trust and credibility back, right? A lot of people, a lot of wrestlers, are looking at it like, wait a minute, they're on a viable network now. Maybe this is an option. Yeah, you know, we, yeah, when they're on Pursuit and Twitch, nobody's breaking their door down. Um, to be like. Hey, there's a lot of people watching Access TV for different things, and it's that that mid range age perfect range, that are yeah. watching classic rock, rock and roll related mm-hmm. stuff, wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call that on yep. that channel. It's rock and wrestling. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be real fun to see. Uh, a lot of people question some things. They question, you know, ah, you have all these old ECW guys, and you know, who's next to come back? And, you know, but I'm like, if you're marketing the, I mean, Access's demo is like thirty plus, like prime demo is like thirty years old. Oh you mar- yeah. You market that. You're you're catching some of that old ECW crowd, WCW crowd. You might appeal to that that lost. Group. Because here's the thing, a lot of, the big debate is, and guys, I promise we'll get to the review, but this is a good business talk here. Um, the big debate is, right, There was, there's like 5 million fans who stopped watching after the WCW and ECW closure. Oh, one. Like 5 oh, yeah. million people went away. Then you had some come back during the TNA days. There was 2 million a week. Obviously, some of those are crossover from WWE, but... There's like 5 million people who just don't watch wrestling anymore. And people are like, well, AEW is going to get them back. But AEW is catering to a whole new crowd. They're catering to like a very niche audience. You know, it's oh, a yeah. very niche audience. As much as they're saying it's broad, it's, it's the indie crowd. Like, I see a lot of the indie fans on at AEW that I work at. That's the crowd. That's the AEW crowd. It's the, it's the indie crowd it's the guys who oh i saw these guys in the indies and we're coming up with them yeah. i don't know how much mass appeal but impacts in a very unique place jay that being on a station where the where the, where the median demo is 30 years old you appeal to those those people now you get a guy who's watching like who's on x for a concert and then he sees a commercial let's say i don't know rvd is in the commercial he has a call man rob van dam now i'll give you a perfect example perfect example the Hemi guys, my, my guitarist, Tim, he's not, a, he's not a weekly wrestling fan. He knows of it, watched it back in the day, uh, knows of Impact because, you know, we're, we're involved, so he knows a little bit. But when he saw, I showed him, I sent him, I said, oh, you'd love the Rascals segment. I said, you'd love this stuff. And I sent him the one with RVD. Mm-hmm. And he was like, holy shit, RVD is an Impact? <laughs> I, said, I love RVD. Like that, you know what I mean? Like he's, Tim's 35. Yeah, and his and his exact go. thing was, holy shit, RVD's an impact. Wow, that's awesome. I can't yeah. wait. To, maybe we'll meet him at the, at the show. That was the idea. Like that's the f- that right there is a prime example of like if you get the right people, and they're like, oh shit, I remember that guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tommy Dreamer. Oh man, that's who they got. That's awesome. Let me check it out. Yeah, they can tap into that crowd. So you might. Don't gawk, like fans, I'm going to tell the fans here, don't gawk if you see more guys come back. 
you might get a couple of old WCW. Maybe, maybe they bring a few guys out for some shits and giggles. You know, they, they bring them in, incorporate them in. Yeah. But it's, it'd be to get these guys back. Same reason the AEW's got Tully and Arn. You know, it's the same reason. Oh, TNT, yeah. it's the w, they're trying to get that WCW crowd again. So it's yeah, an interesting man, time. that's a big thing. It's a lot a, of people love classic WCW shit. I know I do. I lo- I do. I'm a I'm a WCW. If I point this camera that way, there's 150 TNA and Impact DVDs and WCW stuff. I'm a WCW guy. And yes, I'm not an AEW guy, but man, the Tully and Arn thing was like it got me thinking. I'm like, man, Ric Flair is suing him right now, and shit. Maybe he might just show up on AEW, and shit. Barry Windham's alive. Maybe he might fucking show up too. Like. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see the horseman on goddamn TNT once again. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would get me to at least check it out. So. And you're going to have Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone calling the action. It's kind of wild, man. And I like to, I'm not even an AEW guy. So there's certain things going on, and I think Impact's in a very, very prime position to tap into everything else. Oh, yeah. They, everything else that's not being touched, they can get that, and they can try to get some of those people back. Very, very important time. Good prod, good consistency is going to be the key here and the yeah. right people to promote. So, yeah, guys, sorry for that little rant. We went out a little long. We do have a review to do. So, Jay, let's get into it. What do you say? Yes. All right. <laughs> September 13th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling, Front in Mexico. We kicked it off, Jay. Kira Hogan, Tennille Dashwood, her in-ring debut with Impact. Um, it was a – I'm not impressed with Tennille. I never have been. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I feel like as good as Kira has gotten, she had to slow down herself here a little bit. She really uh, did. Yeah. I, now, tell me, I'm going to ask him to kick it over to you here. Did Tennille seem a little nervous? Because I know she's not a bad wrestler. She knows how to work it. She's been everywhere. But did she seem nervous? I don't know what it was, but it really took a while for this match. Not that every match has to be like 100 miles an hour. But this match really took a while to get going. Like, yeah. the whole first half of the match was like, I'm, I was sitting there watching and shaking my head like, oh, damn, what's what's going on here? It was a lot of the feeling out, but the feeling out went on a long time. Now, Kira's young. It did. You know, and it was, there was a lot of rest holds, a lot of chasing each other, and I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Let's, I mean, sometimes let's you, give me something. <laughs> you don't have chemistry with everybody. I get it. Lot, but the feeling out went a long, a long, long time. I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage you, but I've never been, I've never been a Tennille fan. What I've seen of her, but Kira is our up and comer. That's our girl. You know, that's the one who is the future of that knockout division. Yeah. And I think, and I get it. She's in the ring with somebody who's been around a little more. It's good for, it's good for Kira. She did lose here. She, she lost to the finish of the spotlight. Um, I didn't see Tennille going down in this one because she, it's her debut. Oh, I heard, yeah. I saw, yeah, I, I need to see a little more. I'm not, I'm not there yet with, with Tennille. Her being jumped, thrown into the knockouts main event picture, I'm a little weary of that. It's the classic impact thing. A lot of people said it's classic impact. The newcomer gets the title shot right away. So, and sometimes if it's booked properly, it works. Like, it does. Like and with I, but, Elgin, it worked because Brian was gone for a significant amount of time. That gave perfect. them a chance to really build up Elgin. They didn't yes. give him the match the next week. It was like, okay, Brian's gone. Let's have Elgin destroy everyone, and he did, and he yeah. did it well. And if and if fill, fill that gap uh, that we were missing with that big powerhouse guy. And by the time it got to the championship match, it really did put some doubt in. The hearts of fans, like, oh, shit, is Brian really going to pull us off? Yeah, that's the thing, too. Yeah. Now, I here's one thing, philosophically. Let me ask the loungers this, too, and you guys leave your comments on this. I get why they do it. A lot of people say, oh, they just throw the guy in right to the main event. But it's like, look from a realistic point of view. If you're coming into a company, like you see your wrestler, why would, wouldn't the first thing you target be the title? Like, I'm coming here for the belt. I don't give a shit about working my way up. I want the top title. Oh, so if absolutely. Like, if a guy yeah. really came in, his idea is, I want the title. I don't want to worry about the you know, mid-card. I want to go for the belt. And the thing is, people are like, well, they give him the title shot right away. But it's like, 
realistically, the guy is going to go take his ch- his shot. Like, Eldridge oh, yeah. took his shot. You know, he attacked Cage, like, saying, I'm on your radar. I'm taking my shot with you. That's the idea. I get it. From a realistic point of view, I get it. Yeah. Uh, like, on paper, yeah. But, like, what, 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 gave people, what gave people a little weird feeling was that what Impact has done in the past, TNA, old, old regimes, um, this new regime did it once, too, with Alberto, but first night in, the guy wins the belt. And it's like, what, the guy just got here? You gave him the belt already? <laughs> so that, that's kind of rubbed people the wrong way, but they don't, they're not doing that anymore. They've learned lessons that the new yeah. booking and writing has learned that lesson. I don't see that happening again. So you get, you have a little bit of a buildup. Uh, let's move on here. We go from that. OVE cam, Sammy Callahan's complaining about impact management, giving Brian Cage still six weeks to heal. He's not having it. Yeah. It's it's official. It's Callahan and Cage. We never got to the, the matches, Jay, the Bound for Glory matches. Let's do that at the end. Since oh, we that's, fine. that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. But uh, good. Yeah, we can do that at the very end, yeah. Cage, Cage is officially defending against Sammy. Makes me very happy. I'm going to be a Bound for Glory. I can't wait. We're going to see that live. Sammy in Chicago is a big deal. He's been here. He is AW royalty. He's currently holding the big belt for AW. So three times. Very... Yeah, and he's he's the man over here in Chicago. So I, I see him getting a bigger pop even as a heel coming into that. So oh, yeah. uh, official. Then we go to the, the North being interviewed by Jimmy Jacobs, which Jimmy Jacobs has turned into the official backstage guy here. Um, yeah, interesting that he's throwing a little more uh, personality out there and not as much. I mean, I'm sure he's still doing plenty behind the scenes stuff. He's still writing, yeah. But Melissa has more of a role with Brian, which is yeah. interesting. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So for now, Jimmy fits it. He's okay. He's okay. I, I, I'm all right with it. I mean, he's he's a good talker. They did hire a new new girl who was on Total Divas. I can't remember her name right now, but they did hire a new girl. They posted about it. She's um she's gonna be starting as a backstage interviewer soon. So oh. I forgot her name. She was on Total Divas, I think, is what it was. Uh, so she is gonna be starting soon. So I think Melissa's looking to be full time valet. I guess is what this point. So hmm. we'll see what happens to Melissa. This new girl should be started. I can't remember her so name. Melissa's going to be Elizabeth to Brian Cage's Savage. Elizabeth. Yep. Yeah, he did throw that in there on the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> um, so we go to the, the North. They're talking about retiring LAX titles. I mean, they're basically saying, hey, we're, we're, you, no one's going to beat the North. Dominating tag team. Keep them strong. The North is the future. You cannot make them look weak in any sense, and they haven't. So far, the North is looking amazing. And and they're also giving uh, Josh Alexander a chance to cut a little promo here and there with Ethan, and that's good. Ethan's yep. got a little more sarcasm, goofy charisma. It's a little funny. A little and, haha. And Josh is a, a more straight to the point. So it's it's a little bit of both for those guys. It's 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 a nice how they play off each other. It's a nice mix. I like it. Yep. I like I like the fact that uh, Josh is you know it, it took him a while, but he was new. He's new to like a lot of you know a lot of fans. You know, I I barely knew him from last year, and now he's on TV all the time, and now he's talking. It's it's good. It's good character development. Did you see? The film on the Jim Lina Memorial Tournament from AAW. Did you see the film that was put out? Oh, uh, dude. You're talking about the, the, the build-up from the tournament and then his match with Eddie Kingston. Yeah, did you see that film? It was like an 18-minute film made by my buddy Rob Malinowski, filmmaker. That film about the two of them there, because they went you know two different sides of the bracket, met up in the finals. Josh wrestled four matches in two days, 104 degree fever, won the tournament. And everything going on with Eddie and his physical ailments, his shoulder. Shoulder and, and everything. Oh my God, dude. I by, dare... by the end of that, oh yeah. I was in tears, dude. The I Eddie had a promo. In my throat. Oh. There's two scenes that'll stick out there. Guys, I encourage you to go to AW Pro on, on YouTube. 
watch. So if you want to be a Josh Alexander fan and Eddie Kingston fan, there's two scenes that will stick out. Eddie's post-match after the tournament, and there's a scene where Oof. before the final, Josh is on the floor, towel over him. He's at 104-degree fever, and he's got to go out and put, that, put on the match of the night in the final. It is incredible. It is incredible. I, it, was, I, it was hard to watch. It was painful to watch, but damn, the, the highlights they showed. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Watch the film. Watch the film, guys. You'll, it's worth it. Uh, you'll see why Josh is a big, big deal for Impact Wrestling. Uh, we move on, Jay. Michael Elgin taking on Dynastia. Dynastia? Is it, was it Dynastia? Dynastia. Was like, <laughs> Trying to think of how the <laughs> Dynastia. I don't know how they, they said it all he was crazy. Small guy, he jumped around a lot. There was a lot of bouncing and bipping and Elgin kind of just power moving the shit out of him. But it turned into the final, uh, the the finisher being Elgin putting him into the Emerald Flosion, which yeah. is the finishing move of Mara Fuji. Fuji. Hmm. And and that Elgin gets on the mic, sends a message to Marafuji, the one man he never fought in Japan. He lists off a bunch. He says the one guy never fought was Marafuji, and he challenged him to Bound for Glory. Now, I'm not, I know Marafuji. Do you have a little more background? Give us a little more background on Marafuji. What do you know about him? Give us your opinion here, Jay. I had to look it up because I, the name was sounded familiar. If you go back two years... In Impact Wrestling, now it was kind of a time, it was like right before Impact big time hit the road again. In fact, in fact, it's very interesting because a couple of the videos I watched, you're in them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I looked up Marafuji on the Impact Plus app and it showed specific matches from specific dates and stuff like that uh -huh. and was watching a couple episodes and there you are in the front row with your woman i'm like is that trent holy shit that's trent oh you're and, talking uh, uh you're talking uh yeah this is this is during the soup the super x cup no yes yeah yeah this is yeah, it's, yeah he wasn't part of the super x cup but that was at the same time yeah so sammy, sammy guevara yeah um, that's <laughs> ACH was a part of that. AC, all, yes. all sorts of oh man, all these good names that I was. I, yeah. I wanted. I don't think I was as active on social media a couple of years ago, but man, I would have blown up Twitter twenty thousand times more. And been like, would you please sign Sammy? Is well now he's signed somewhere else, and so is mm -hmm. ACH and all these other guys. But not besides that. Um, but yeah, Marafuji was part of Impact uh, tapings at that time. Yeah, it was July he, of seventeen. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, one of them was he faced Moose for the Grand Championship. He had a tag I match. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's, there's a there's like a handful of matches or a couple matches or whatever it was. I don't remember what it all was in there, but but yeah, he was part of Impact at that time. Had some fun matches. I don't remember mm -hmm. who who some of the other ones were. So yeah, if you want to, if you've got the Impact Plus app, go back two years ago, summer of uh, 2019 during the X. 17. Just, 27. Said, what, what did I say? You said 19. Oh, 19. Yeah. 17. Yeah, two years ago, and uh, you can look up and see some of his stuff, and or just go on YouTube and look up some of his uh, Japanese stuff. He's a veteran in the ring, uh, tremendous, and um, the fact that he's coming to Bound for Glory. Well, it was announced that he was coming to Pound for Glory. We had no clue why. Now we know why. Yeah, I, I was talking to BQ today. He mentioned, he goes, you know, they needed to do a better job of press releasing something like this because the only people are talking about it is Impact and Impact fans, but they needed to make a bigger deal out of this um, this this match happening. So hopefully they do because marafuji has been everywhere, and he was trained by Masawa, which is the, the Japanese legend, all Japan, Noah, uh, you know, what else? Uh, he's done New Japan. Uh, Ring of Honor is where I first saw him back in the day. You know, old school Ring of Honor. He was he had some matches okay. with Danielson and um, oh. and Joe. You know, he, he was – I saw him live in Chicago, I think. He did a couple of Chicago appearances. 
but just old tapes. I got a ton of Ring of Honor old stuff, so I've seen him on there. But the Mayor Fuji has been around. Uh, he's oh, definitely yeah. been around. He's a staple. So great, uh, great talent, man. This is going to be a very interesting match because Elgin loves that Japanese style. You know, he's a Japanese style guy. So yeah, I mean, he had some good short. matches over in New Japan. You know, and he just. He didn't accomplish what he wanted to, and that's why he's not there no more. But he still, yeah, has a, I think it has a love and respect for, yeah. yeah. So the fact that they're putting him with Marufuji for Bound for Glory. Um, Huge. It, I, I like it, you know. I mean, it's going to be interesting how they build this, because I don't see Marufuji coming to tapings. You know, I didn't hear about, I, I didn't look up and see if he was part of the Vegas tapings. But so it's gonna be interesting how they build this. But I mean, the, the, the match is gonna be good either way. You know it is between these two. So I'm not really that worried about it. There's gonna be other matches that are gonna be insanely built along the way over the next several weeks. So if a match like this doesn't get stuff like every week on it, I'm good. Good I'm, point. I'm I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? Yeah, it, I'm gonna need it. Maybe not every week, but it's gotta at least be every other week. You gotta keep plugging it somehow. Oh yeah. Uh, they gotta have Mayor Fuji send something in. Uh, something's gotta be pushed from the other side too. So I, I gotta have a little something. He, I don't know what they can do, but connections are there, so I'm sure we can get something sent over. So we'll see. We'll now see what... he's in. Is he in Noah? I believe right he's in. He's in. I. Th- I think he's in all Japan now, which is a, which is on a small scale, but I think he's. Let me see. Actually, he is. But he's back in Noah. Sorry, so that's the connection. He was in all okay. Japan last year, and we tend to forget because that's who they had the connection with a yeah. year, a couple years ago. And Eddie became what they did the, the GHC jam. He was the first the, guy. The jam, yeah, yeah, yeah. First, first so, guy. So yeah, gene. maybe. I mean, and I know MLW. Has that connection? There we go. Bring it up, MLW again. But, but <laughs> like, they have. It's gonna piss Kyle off. So your son-in-law is not That's, here. You're okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Scum in law. Um, Scum in law. But, <laughs> um, but MLW has the, uh, the 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 trade-off thing with uh, Noah right now. Hammerstone was he spent a month over in Japan or whatever, and. Um, so there's that. So maybe Impact is going to get that back. Maybe. I, I don't know. You know, I'm not going to overthink it now, but it just uh, I'm looking forward to this nonetheless. So. Did, I, did I tell the Hammerstone story? Did I, tell you, did I mention this? Did uh, I put it on you, the air? You might have. <laughs> Real quick, side note, total sidebar. Okay. Uh, Hammerstone used to wrestle for a company called Dreamwave Wrestling in Southern Illinois. Um, AW, where I work, bought Dreamwave out. And we went to go scope out the goodbye show that they had, which they're coming back now too, which is funny. But since we left, we left that town, LaSalle, Illinois, real rural small town. Uh, but on their last show was Hammerstone, who was a regular there. And I remember being in that crowd. And they're talking. This is this is country. You know, we're city, and they just they had their favorites. But there was a guy in the crowd who just would kept throughout all of Hammerstone's appearances, matches. He just would yell. Hammerstone! <laughs> Hammerstone! And I was like, what the fuck? Who the hell is Hammerstone? And he would just say it over and over and over. Hammerstone! I was like, what? <laughs> then I found yeah. out. But Shine that, is good out in LaSalle. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no shit. All right, let's move on. <laughs> I'm Hammerstone. That's but, rich. Taya Valkyries and Rosemary's lair, and Rosemary says, how do you keep getting in here? It was kind of a little comedic. Taya's being the valley girl, hilarious. She gives Rosemary a gift, and the gift is an iPhone. It was an iPhone, by the way. I did see the logo on the back. Yes. And she goes, we can keep in contact. And then she's t- talking about she's invited to a party. Bravo's not invited, though. He's like, what the? Bra- watch Johnny Bravo's facial expressions. Fantastic. And this thing, priceless facial expressions. By the way, Bravo made a post. He ordered, like, 16 new shirts of those shirts he wears, and he's like, I'm ready for access. <laughs> I'm like, he's got all the disco ball shirts going on. Um, I, for... I need to I need to hit him up and, like, find out where he's getting these. He posted I, it. He posted it. The I, need, 
I need to like it's all I have right now is a bunch of like old metal and wrestling shirts. I need to revamp my closet a little bit. Talk maybe to for Bravo. May, maybe for Bound for Glory. Might maybe. not be a bad idea. Johnny not listen, John E. Bravo uh, has listened to the show. I don't know if he listens, listens every week. I like to think he does. But he tuned in live when we went live. So uh John, if you're listening, uh let J Bone over here tweet him at J Bone fifty one fifty. Let him know where the hell he can buy those shirts because he isn't very inspired. By your fashion sense, so John, I, I need uh, I need something <laughs> tantalizing for Bound for Glory weekend. <laughs> I can, you won't wait till next week. I got a good one for you next week. God damn it, you oh, wait. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna tie it. In. It's gonna be a real rock and roll tie-in with that one too. So anyway, oh, we go nice. from that. TJP's in the back. He walks up on follow bot eating, hilarious. Uh, he said, "He's like, hey, what's going on?" And he's like, "Bah." <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, no, stop that. He sits down. Swaps his plate to like something healthier, and he swaps it to water, water from soda. <laughs> He's like, "I'm gonna help you find your voice." You know, we're Filipinos. We come from proud people. I'm gonna help you find your voice. <laughs> so, oh, but, yeah, yeah, that's, that's gonna be interesting. I, I, I like don't know that. Where that's gonna go? I like it. I like it. I, I'm a can big. Can I tell you? Can yeah. I tell you where I, I don't like pre-book stuff a lot? Good. But I'll tell you where I want this to go. Because like I've been, we've been talking about Falaba a lot lately. What his 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 progress? His progress is fantastic. Let's hear it. And I want. I, I love TJP. I love the fact that he's a part of Impact Wrestling again. Whether he's signed or not, I don't. I don't care. He's he's on there. That's all I care about. I okay. Appreciate that. So whatever content he's on there for wrestling promos, I love it. Okay. He's, a, he's a welcome addition to the roster is what I'm saying. I want to see a little bit of comedic stuff between DJ uh, TJP and Falaba and have it lead, you know, like kind of like mentoring him, maybe in a couple of matches, mm -hmm. or some backstage segments, maybe a little bit of comedy thrown in. And I want Falaba to full blow turn on tjp and we get mm. here falaba now that's from what, that's what i want I, I, it may not be the most popular thing but that, because i i see it in falaba i from what i understand he was a heel for a long time in russell in uh russell pro uh pro wrestling syndicate in new jersey mm. and he was he was a good heel from what i understand so Fala can go heel. He came in as a as a semi heel too with Mario Pacara. So he's got he can do heel. Uh, would be interesting to see him turn heel, but he's so loved. He's so lovable. He's the panda bear. He is. He is. But if you look at his shirt, it's like the panda's like gnarly looking. Yeah, I, know. I did see that. So who knows where, where we can go with Fala? Um, we go from that Jay to Moose, and what I feel is his best promo ever and i tweeted this out i and, saw you did that yeah. yeah i was very taken by this uh basically he he cuts a promo on ken shamrock if you haven't seen it guys it's on social media check it out i think he even retweeted it. so go to moose's uh twitter on that or impacts yeah. but he cuts a promo on shamrock it was so effective to me i thought jay this was his best one and it got me more hype for sam for um uh bound for glory so I yeah. I'm in on this match. I think that promo really pushed me over the next uh, next level. I I I did like it, and I did hear certain things in that promo that made me go, "Whoa!" Yeah, he is because I saw you I saw you tweet that, and I saw like the picture of him in yeah. the background. So and I but I didn't watch it at that time because i was busy with other stuff i was just quick flipping through social media but i saw that and i was like "Ooh, if, if trent retweeted that it must have been good it was good and so when he got to that point in the show and I, and i even like replayed it and i was like wow that's that's could be one of his best promos yet i think it was i think it was Moose, over the course of this last year, ever since he faced Ares, and I know that may not be a popular name in Impact Wrestling to bring up, but like him or not, um, man, uh, I think he helped with a lot of character development for some people. And whatever he helped 
Boos with, or whoever else is helping Boos now, damn, it's crazy good. You know, we forget that Moose has not been doing this that long. I think his rookie year is 2012. He's yeah. not that far in. Yeah, he started in what? The Ring of Honor Dojo? Ring, Ring of Honor Dojo. He's trained by Mr. Hughes, and he started with, and he went to Ring of Honor. Um, I saw him early on in those years. I saw Moose in those first couple of years. And um, he, he was rough. He was still new. But, man, the maturity that he's come into as a character, as a performer – I what I love about Moose, and then the loungers can tell me this too. I love that he constantly invests in the character. If you look at him, he has new gear every tapings, yeah. new gear for the events, the pay per view. He's always posting it. He's getting rid of the old stuff. He's always selling the old stuff. Mostly, it's acquired by Bill, front row Bill. If you guys have seen my buddy Bill in the front row, wears the Moose vest and the Moose boots. Bill buys oh, a lot. Wow. <laughs> But, That's uh, crazy. But um, but he sells his stuff. He's always evolving, evolving. The fashion gimmick, the money gimmick, the mice. Moose is an ever-evolving character. Whoever taught him this, I think, is really did the best thing they could for him. And I think looking back, him not winning the title when he against Aries at the time, best thing that ever happened to him because he turned into a phenomenal character after that. He did, and he's growing month by month and getting better and better, better at it. Better and better. And the fact that, you know, and some people complained, and we might have even complained a little. I don't remember exactly what we said about him versus RVD or whatever. Yeah. But, man, whenever we've questioned certain things about the rivalry or Moose doing this or yep. facing whoever – Dude, Moose has shined at every angle, man. He has, man. He really has. Uh, he hits it out of the park, man. Like, he gets it, you know? Moose truly gets it. And I think he he is he is doing he is doing what he needs to do to keep evolving. And that's the key with Moose. And I and think it, one of the most important things is this just popped in my head. i got to get this out of my brain, otherwise it's just going to eat at me like a, I don't know. Like a bug. Um, he, <laughs> when he cuts these promos and he's angry and he's talking about like now he's talking about Ken or before he was talking about RVD or whoever before that. Yep. When you're listening to him, he sounds believable. He does sound some believable. Some people sound like they're just making up some goofy shit that they got off a card in the back. When he's talking to the cameraman, mm -hmm. he look he's. He sounds believable. Yeah, he sure does. He sure does, man. That's the key to this. That is the key yeah. to this. So let's keep moving on here. We go from that to Tejano Jr. taking on Dr. Wagner Jr. Uh, bien, 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 bien. This was cool. Dr. Wagner's a legend. Tejano, as, as well as has made some impact appearances, so he's pretty familiar with the audience. But um, the ovation for this match, the crowd, Crowd came alive. It was two of their home, oh, yeah. two of their people. This is two of their regulars, and Doctor Wagner cuts his promo. He's got this voice that just captivated me. You know, He's got this gravelly evil type voice, and it's yeah. it was cool. <laughs> it was he looks cool. Like he's crazy looking. You know, he's a crazy yeah. looking guy, and like he's intense. Still so, you know what? I I want to look up. He debuted Jay. 34 years ago. Okay, I was just going to say, how old is... Well, Age-wise, I don't know, he, but I don't know, he debuted in 1985, is what they said. The Dr. Wagner's been around a long time. He's born in 1965. Oh, my God. Okay, so he's he's been, he's out, he's up there, man, but he looked jacked. He looked like he was in great shape. He moved around. I mean, he's 54 years old. That's That's pretty cool. That's impressive. But he's a very decorated wrestler. I mean, you're talking, you know, former Triple A champion. I'm reading this off. CMLL champion. He's IWGP. 54, and the guy's still built like a brick shit house. Yeah, he, he's great. Unbelievable. Lost his mask recently to Psycho Clown. You know, he... Um... That was a crazy-ass match. Did you see it? That was Triple Mania. Did you watch it? I, I've watched the last few Triple Manias, yeah. Yeah, so he lost that match, and he lost his crown. But he, I mean, he's a very decorated champion. 
he uh, lost his hair to Blue Demon Jr. That was a huge thing, the last one. Yeah. Yeah, he's yep. he's definitely um he's definitely looking at uh He's an icon. He's an icon, man. So you got a big knit and they've announced him for Bound for War. We'll get to that at the end of the show. You'll run down the uh you can run it's down some of the new matches that they just recently added this week, yeah. Yeah, so you'll run that down. But um but yeah, I'm I'm glad. That's cool. That is a good good name to have up there, man. So looking forward to that. That definitely excited about it. But Great match, a lot of back and forth, great energy. Uh, Wagner hit the um, a, sign- a sit down. They call it a signature sit down. They really didn't have a name for it, I guess. But uh, hits that, beat Sejano Jr. So it was a hell of a match. Hell of a match. I really kind of enjoyed. Kind of a driver, it. isn't it? Yeah, kind of a driver. I like to sit out, yeah. sit out driver. You could say, you know, yeah. kind of like a yeah. like a like a Michinoku driver for people who are familiar with that. So basically, uh, yeah, yeah, great. He, he was awesome. So I'm I'm excited about Dr. Wagner being a part of some things. Yeah, but, the guy can move. Go to that to the Ace Austin home wrecking segments here. Ace <laughs> is uh with Alicia and he pro- he asked her to promise that she will stay backstage when her, in the match with Eddie Edwards tonight. No matter what happens, you stay backstage. You don't get involved in this. We go to LAX, they're in the bat in the clubhouse, they're packing up, they're bummed out. Now I'm a little confused on this one, Jay. I want you to talk about this now. I want the people to okay. comment on this too. Rich Swan and Willie Mack come in. Everybody's sour. Hey, you guys are leaving. It's a bummer. Blah blah blah. Um, Mack and Mack and Swan say, "No, nah, you can't leave like that. Let's let, let's let's bang it out. Let's just let's rock it and get you on out on a good on a good note." And they agree. Conan says, "I'm gonna go talk to management and see if we can make this happen." And we're gonna have a match. They have announced it. it's gonna happen next week. Right. I don't get it. They were retired by the North. Why did they get another match? I don't understand. It well, I'm confused on this one. I don't. I don't get how that happens. But why do they get to have another match? I mean, you're done. What do you because think? Because I think Conan's Conan's got a lot of pull. True, he's got pull, but and the fans, the fans love LAX. True and. Honestly, I had a feeling we were gonna get something because in in the the going the the, the going away videos from uh, Ethan Page's was it Ethan Page's vlog. Ethan Page, yeah. He uh, he had little clips of something with Willie Mack and Rich Swan, and I was like, oh. Was that like a dark match that they're not gonna put on there that he got a little footage of? But no, that's that's the match we're gonna get. So that's their last match, and it, it it's the match with the North was emotional because they lost, and you know they lost to the bad guys. The bad guys won. True. But now going out on a more positive note with friends then I mean it's still sad but it just changes the exit of LAX and I think it gives them a little more I, I don't want to say it gives them more respect but it just it gives a better shine to them going out like hey we did it our way we didn't yeah we got kicked out but we had one last party you know, I get it, but then it's like, why'd you have the? I mean, they made such an emphasis on the North has ended LAX's career. Well, it's like when I like a week later or two weeks later, they get another match. It's like uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, I, I, I I get I, it. I get why yeah. they're doing it, but it's like I when, thought about that too. But th- there's so many things in wrestling lately that that do make you scratch your head like well why did they do this and it, it just, <laughs> I've, I've gotten to the point in my life where I, I'm at the age I, I, I jokingly call myself an old fart all the time I'm 45 years old I've watched just a ridiculous amount of wrestling in my life mm-hmm. and 99% of it I forget the next day it's, it's professional wrestling let's not overthink it <laughs> I mean d- doctor, we were just talking about Dr. Wagner and they were talking about how at Triple Mania, he lost his hair to Blue Demon Jr., retired after he got his head shaved. Less than a week later, he was wrestling again. 
<laughs> okay. He's wrestling on Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I guess you're right. He's not retired. Okay, he's not retired. It makes for a good story in the moment, I guess, right? It's, yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, why is he coming back? Why did it? No, oh, just he's wrestling. Just, oh, okay. <laughs> now, now, here's what I'll, I'd like for, for con- continuity's sake. If the match is official, we need a promo from Lenore that says, wait a minute, what are they getting a match for? We retired them. We retired you. You know, oh, basically wait. Something, for, something for them if to oppose get, it. If we don't get something on the show, we got it. We'll, we'll get something on social media from like Ethan going, what the, f-? you know, yeah. something. Yeah. We need that because for continuity's sake, they got to do that. And then you say something like, eh, management said, okay, you know, like, Screw yeah. you guys, they're more important. Something, you know what I mean? Like they gotta give something where it's like management said, We're not listening to you, we're gonna give them the shot, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> like like Scott Demore getting in Ethan Page and Josh Alexander's face, like, they're gonna have the match. I can just picture yeah, yeah, some, right, some, right in the face. <laughs> something like that. Something like that. You know what I mean? We need something like that. We'll see. We'll see. Jim Mitchell gets on the screen and warns Havoc about uh, the dangers of Sue Young. It looks like Jim is with Sue, with Sue, so that's cool. I'm in, I'm in, I need my Jim Mitchell. He is the man. He's, yeah, he warns his kaiju queen, and that's Jessica Havoc, about Sue Young. Yeah. And I, I don't know if he's necessarily with Sue Young, but he knows her better True. than, than Jessica does. So it, he, he doesn't like this confrontation, so he's trying to warn Jessica Havoc about Sue Young, like, hey, you really shouldn't have picked this fight. So yeah. here's a little uh here's a little warning about this. Uh you might want to rethink this. I can see it, man. Yeah. I can see where this goes. This is gonna be interesting to see. Um so, it's I'll... ugly. It's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> now this next we'll talk about ugly. Now here we go. Ace Austin, Eddie Edwards, match of the night to me. This was intensity, intensities, man. Ted Nugent style, intensity, intensities. Live record, bonanza, wild fan. You like that reference, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great live album. But this was nuts. The crowd, crazy into this one. They loved Eddie Edwards. They loved Eddie Edwards. Uh, Eddie's intense. He's, he's, he's boom, boom, boom in your face from the second the bell rings. Yes. It was not, I mean, he wrestled like he was fighting a guy who was trying to bang his wife. That's exactly what makes Eddie Edwards brilliant, is that the guy wrestled like a guy who's fighting a guy who's trying to bang his wife. That's what no, made it great. No bang ski. No bang ski. Beat the oh shit God. out of Ace. Back the, and the forth. Freaking, the commentary. The, the match was but great. Not. Don't get me wrong. But the oh, commentary. I was going to oh say. Oh, my God. Bangorama. I wrote all these little things oh. down. I was like, jeez, <laughs> Louise. The commentary was the best. And I was going to, I meant to tweet it to jo- the Josh, Don, and everybody that this match is great, but the commentary, the way Don's ripping on Josh, it was like, what in the hell is happening on this commentary? No Bangski. No Bangski. <laughs> no Bangski. Incredible. What's going on this weekend? Uh, no bang ski. <laughs> the, <laughs> the match ends when um, Ace goes for that headstand. And he throws a chair at him, takes him out. Ace really sells the injury hard. He gets Eddie's disqualified. He's screaming. He's screaming big time. Yeah. Uh, we are, you know, we're led to believe Ace is really messed up. We cut away. J- Jimmy Jacobs is in the back with Brian Cage and Moses Santos. Congratulating them on the engagement. Melissa reveals that they're getting married in two weeks in the, in the Las Vegas tapings for Impact. Fun. We got uh, Impact Wedding, uh, Las Vegas Impact Wedding. And I think that somebody say we're going to try to live up to, live up to other weddings, or that might have been on social media. I think Brian Cage we're going to try to live up to the other weddings in Impact, and they he used like Braxton Sutter and Allies as the example, which I think was a great. Great wedding angle that they did a couple years ago, but uh, oh, that was that was ridiculous. Oh, so good. Yeah, with Chelsea, with um, God, what was Chelsea, Chelsea Green? What was her name in uh, 
Oh shit! What was her name in Impact? God damn! I thought I forgot her name. Um, oh my oh god. god! Oh my god! <laughs> the the train wreck. The hot, me the hot mess. The hot express. mess. Oh god! Oh, La Laurel I... Van Ness. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god! The hot mess, Laurel Van Ness. Uh, that was a great, great wedding. But yeah, they want to live up to that, so we'll see. That was my introduction to her, and she's in phenomenal. Great Instagram, too. Check out her Instagram. She's fun. <laughs> Johnny Swinger vignette after this hilarious... Oh, laughing my, my ass off. Uh, this, was, this was so good. So good. And I'm going to give a shout to Eric Tompkins, who was one of the producers at Impact. And he, this was his baby, from what uh, I'm told. This was his baby. Eric Tompkins knocked it out of the park on this one. Uh, just the way he filmed it. Um, and they put this together. This is sheer brilliance. <laughs> I had when, me laughing. When, when I grow up, I want to be Johnny Swinger. <laughs> I mean, he's lifting weights. No autographs. You got to pay to watch me work out. No autographs. <laughs> like, girls for the girls. Girls for the, the girls. Girl, Don't, girls for the girls. That's the best one. Just swing it. I mean, you. <laughs> I thought you. Had, I thought you had a hat that said "Girls for the Girls" on it. But uh, oh no. Um, Ace Austin, we cut over there. Ace Austin's being loaded into the ambulance. Alicia's messed up. very messed up. Alicia's there, furious at Eddie. Eddie comes running up. She's pissed at Eddie for brutally attacking Ace. She's uh, totally upset. And Eddie's like, where the hell are you going? You can't go with him. You can't go with him. You know? And then she's she's pissed off. She goes, you cheated on me. So she's she's away from her. Mentally, she's done with Eddie. And they have a stare down. And in the background, you have Ace Austin just humping, just showing Eddie like screw you. He's humping the air, but basically he's not hurt. And he's showing he's gonna he's gonna bang his wife, you know. So, uh, and she gets in the ambulance and drives off with Ace Austin. <laughs> it's gonna be a bangorama at the hosp at the ho at the hospital. <laughs> hospital. It's gonna be a, definitely a bangorama. <laughs> definitely check those vitals. That's gonna be nuts. So. <laughs> We go from that to a very oh, fun match. This match was fun. The crowd ate it up. Big Mommy and Nino Hamburguesa taking on Daisy Hit Squad. I just call him. I just call him Hamburger. Hamburger Boy. Uh, <laughs> Rohit Raju, Raj Singh, uh, who came out with Cody Deaner and Jake Deaner, who um, <laughs> you know because they're working on the farm. They came out. This was just a. This was your classic. Party comedy match. This was fun. It was. It had the crowd popping. It was just everybody was laughing. I mean, this was a good time all the time. Uh, Nino launches off the ropes onto Raj for the win. But just the spots in this one, Jay, comedic as all hell. What do you think? Oh, it was and the athleticism. I'm of... impressed. <laughs> I can't believe how that they did that. Unbelievable. Big Mommy off the top rope and... Uh, Matrix that she would do? The Matrix and all that? Like, oh, yeah. The fact that she can do that. And she's she's a, you know... The bigger she's, woman. She's a big she's girl. Big yeah. Mommy. <clears throat> big and mommy. Hamburger flying through the ropes. I was like, oh my god. These guys can move. They can move, but... Uh, Nuts. They did it, man. Jay, they were... Uh, they were... They, they pulled it off, but now afterward... Now, um, Deaner's in the ring with the hit squad. Uh, they're messing with him a little bit. Out of nowhere, Mahabali Shara, or Mahabali Shara, sorry, I'm, I shouldn't pronounce that right. Mahabali Shara makes his return, attacks the Deaners, takes him out. I mean, he's a big hoss. He took out the big hoss, Jake. The, the, Dude, he, he, made, he made Jake look small. I got to say this. Shara looked fantastic. He, he did. Looked, he looked like a monster. He looked confident. I mean, he went down to NXT for a, half a year, got a little touched up. Uh, Gama comes out smiling. You know, Chacha Gama coming out, yeah. and he comes out, and 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 Shira is like, get down, and they all bow in front of Gama, and they do the, the pose, and I'm like, holy shit, like he looked good, and I was like. He was a guy people were like, what the hell? He was comedic with the share of shuffle and all that, you know? But it's like, yeah. 
this dude came into his own. He looked like a monster. Uh, it's it's time. It's finally time. I mean, there might be a little bit of comedic stuff going forward, but I think the Desi Hit Squad is gonna be a it's gonna be a big turning point now. Yeah, and it's going to be finally time to take them more serious. This is the time is now, man. This is fun. Yeah. Now we're in for something here. You got three man, you got the big hoss, you got the you got the X division, and you got the Greenhorn, who can who can do a lot of the work, you know. And you got some you got some some dynamics in this thing. This could be a lot of fun if done right. It makes me wonder. Now, you wouldn't necessarily have to add someone to the Diener family. No. I mean, adding a, someone would be a little weird now, I think. For a three... But do you have anyone in mind? Like, okay, they added Shira. Like, because you would think, like, the ultimate thing would be, like, a, 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 a big three-on-three -three war. Diener. Absolutely, yeah. Compound versus... Uh, the Daisy family. Yeah. Yeah, the Daisy Head Squad. I'm trying to think of someone that they could add to the Diener family for this war, but I can't think of no one off the top of my head. But you never know. You never know. And that's the thing. You got to, you got to, um, it's got to be done right if you're going to do it. But oh, yeah. I'll I'll tell you what I uh, which one I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to that to that Jake and Shara match. That's gonna be, that's the Hoss match, man. That is the fuck. That is the Clash of the Titans. That's what I want to oh, see. Oh hell yeah, dude. Yeah. So, he, Shira, yeah. He looked great. I'm very very impressed with with Shira. I think this this will be a very this will be a good run, better than the last. Um. All right, we're in the yeah. main event, Jay. Here we go. Sammy Callahan, Jake Christ. Taking uh, Tessa Blanchard, Tommy Dreamer, street fight all over the place. You know, like you expect the street fight, you know, the classic Tommy Dreamer street fight. Um, Callahan hits Dreamer with the tech, with the cactus driver to get the win. And, um, you know, it was it was a strong one. You needed Sammy to go over on this. Uh, you got to keep Sammy strong. He's, he's the main event of Bound for Glory. He's got He cannot look weak. Uh, and Dreamer took the pin, which is a smart move. You can't have Tessa take another pin from Sammy. Cannot yeah. do it. Action pack match, your classic. Uh, it's, your, it's what you expect. You got your technical with Tessa. You got your brawling, Tommy and um, Tommy and Sammy. You got some more high flying technical with uh, Jake. A little bit of everything. Everything was covered here. What do you think of this one? And Tessa looked like a million bucks. She did. Always you does. Know, and, yeah, and and uh, I I love the fact that they're kind of teasing the whole thing, like you know Josh freaking out, like. Can you imagine Sammy Callahan being the face of the company? It's like, oh, oh, oh I'm just, yeah. I'm just salivating. Like, yeah, let's, yes. Because him as champion is going to be, it could be very, very cool. I love, please don't get me wrong. If you followed my podcast, you know how much I love Brian Cage from the first few episodes of Lucha Underground, that was my introduction to him, mm -hmm. okay? And I know he went back a lot farther than that, but that was my first eyes on him was Lucha Underground, him being a beast and just ripping through Lucha Underground and Johnny Mundo and all those guys and Taya and then bringing him to Impact Wrestling. And, yeah, I know his championship wrong run has been very... T uh, Lackluster. Yeah, you know, and it's, Underwhelming. it's not his fault. Yeah, it's, you know, he's been banged up. He's had injuries. I mean, we can blame management, I think, for some of it. Maybe some of us want them to take the title off of him or do something different. Well, that's fine. That's not up to us. We just have to just deal with it. But, man, Sammy Callahan, what he's done with this company since two Bound for Glories ago. Yeah. Just he two. came in with OVE, and they played the they played the flashback. They did, yeah. And that and that goes back to what I was talking about a week or two ago with that tag team war between OVE, the Chris Brothers, and LAX. LAX yeah. And that was back when there was 
that was pretty much it for the tag team scene in Impact Wrestling back then. It was yeah. rough. It was really freaking rough. And then the inclusion of Sammy Callahan was just... It's what they needed. Or, or as the cars would say, you're just what I needed. <laughs> you're just what I needed. <laughs> um, and the culmination of Sammy winning a championship like the Impact Wrestling Championship, going to a bigger stage, the new TV deal, all this positive stuff going on in the world yep. of Impact Wrestling. Two years later with Bound for Glory, right to the debut show and everything, yeah. Sorry, I even got you, yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's just, man, it's the icing on the cake, yeah. and it's a long road. A lot of hard work on the part of Sammy Callahan. The culmination, dude. I can't freaking wait, man. Yeah, I'm excited about well, it. Winner, honestly, win or loss in Chicago, I think he's gonna win. But win or lose, Sammy's road in Impact Wrestling, fantastic, has been insane to watch. As a pro, as a professional wrestling fan, and a fan of him, going from not knowing what the hell he was doing in NXT when he got called up to the WWE to hitting the indies again on fire, showing the world what he's made of. On his own account, on his own yes. rules, man. He did it himself. Yes. The Desperado. Yeah, he's... And, man, it's just, it's been amazing to watch. He, to me, I think Sammy Callahan's the best, the best in the world today because he's the most diverse. I think he is everywhere everywhere <laughs> yeah it's he said it yeah he he to me is the best i think he's number one um i don't care about who can do the most arm bars and who can do the damn flying wizards and shining this and i don't i don't care the guy who lights up every goddamn promotion he touches and who leaves a mark every damn place he goes is sammy callahan and runs his own promotion in the middle of all that. Runs his own. <laughs> he's got a couple of them, doesn't he? Or something? Well, he runs Wrestling Revolver. Okay. And he's uh, and he helps with uh, Rockstar Pro, which the Chris mainly do Rockstar and a couple other people. But, oh, okay. But his main one is the Revolver. That's that's okay. all Sammy. They run out of Iowa. I've been invited right. to several. I just it's, it's a five-hour drive for me. It's usually on a Friday. It's still tough to get over there. But I promised Sammy I'd blessed, be there. Yeah. I promised I'd be there at some point to help out. So Yeah, well, they're moving that show all over the place. And I think, I think, um, I don't know if you've heard any more details about this all, what, what is the show that you're playing called? The All Glory, all Glory. Fan? Okay. Um, there is supposed to be wrestling at this show. It yeah. sounds like it's going to be basically sammy's party well here here's what i that, that's what i'm starting to hear well we know this is all i know and they haven't announced anything yet uh there's two promotions in chicago called warrior wrestling and one's called zello pro okay um they are partnering with warrior and zello to do this show uh, at all glory like this is going to be warrior and zello's platform uh they use a lot of the same talent. Warrior has featured a ton of impact talent. If you look at Warrior Wrestling, look at Warrior Wrestling on High Spots or something, you'll see the, I mean, it's basically it's an impact show. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of a co-op between the two to host impact. Uh, I don't have any details yet. They just told us we're playing three songs. That's all I know is that my band Hemi is going to play three songs at it, but I don't know the layout yet. I figure in the next two weeks we'll probably know a little more. But... All Glory is looking pretty good. So, we'll, uh, it'll, I'm not sure. It might be Sammy taking over the whole thing. Nobody knows yet. I'll know more in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Because in the, the pre-show to Operation, because I started to watch Operation oh, Override. Yeah. And the pre-show, Sammy's on it talking to Josh. And he, Sammy, he could have been just blowing smoke. But he made it sound like All Glory was going to be like his thing and something about 
Revolver's going to be involved with it or something. Oh, okay. So I don't know if I don't know if there's something changing that weekend. I don't know. No idea. Well, I, have, I don't know. Keep in mind. Now you also have Friday night, which is Road to Glory. On the 18th in South Bend, Indiana, and I believe that's being hosted by Black Label Pro. I think I'm not sure. So they have Road to Glory, All Glory, Bound for Glory. That's the whole weekend. Yeah. The Saturday one. Hey, if Sammy's doing it, then uh, I gotta wear I gotta wear a Sammy Callahan T-shirt <laughs> when I play. So we'll see, man. We'll see. I, I, if I know anything I can reveal, I'll tell you. Right now, I don't have anything. So, yeah. But let's finish this one up here. Uh, yes. These guys win. After the match, OVE continues to beat down Dreamer and Tessa. She tries fighting back. Chair shots all around. He's about to pile driver, but RVD and Rhino make the save. Hardcore Legends close out the show. RVD, Tommy, Rhino standing with Tessa. It's extreme backup. That's what they called it. Uh this could be a fun little four-on-four. Four. OVE, Sammy, Fulton taking on these four. That's pretty cool. That's what I'm... I think that's happening this Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, could be. So that was... Uh, that could be fun. So, that Jay, that was the September 13th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling. Yeah, Front crazy Mexico. ending. Good ending. Good show. Great crowd. The, the Mexico crowd... Gets better every time they go. I think they're building some loyalty now. It was it's a, they've had some quiet crowds, they've had some very shaky crowds. Now this crowd was on fire. I loved it. They had it right. They were in it for the right reasons. They're building regularity with this visit, and people are into it. So I'm looking. I, I'm I am excited. They made me happy. I tell you what. It, it, one thing I was going to bring up earlier, and then I forgot to. One part that killed the. Uh, Kiara Hogan to Neil Dashwood match. If you go back and watch it, you can hear crickets. Oh, I heard. I about think that. that's another thing. There's another. That's another thing that really hurt this match. The crowd. There was like one guy yelling to Neil Dashwood. You know yeah. something. It was like, oh man. You know, and they didn't get into the match. I mean, they weren't quiet for the whole thing, but at least the first half to three quarters of the match. Yeah. People were just sitting on their hands, and and deservedly so. I mean, this started out really slow. Rest holds, running around yeah. outside of the ring. There wasn't a lot going on. I mean, the, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't until later when it really started picking up. Mexican fans, they demand more. You are used to – I mean, look what Dr. Wagner and Tejano did later on in the show. I mean, dude, that's what they want. 55-year-old guy can move like that? Nah, you're two 20-something-year-old chicks. You better move. You gotta get, you gotta get going. They they have no tolerance oh, yeah. for this shit. You gotta yeah. move. <laughs> so they weren't gonna wait for him. Uh, yeah, they're used to Viking O and Golden yeah. Magic, just lucha stuff. You can't. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. So uh, lesson learned. You know, I'm I'm more Team Kira here. She's the she's the the long term um, youngin here. So I feel I, I thought Tenille could have been a better leader. In the match, it's just a viewer's standpoint. I don't know anything about it. I felt she should yeah. have taken more of a leadership approach and, and, and call the match a little more excitingly. But, you know, whatever. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll see if she'll, she'll get better. Who knows? It's just nerves. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. yeah. So, Jay, before we take off here, why don't you tell us the, the current card for Bound for Lord. What do you have? What's been announced? Let's, let's throw it out there to the people so they have a little reminder. Well, the week before, we heard that it's official that Callahan is going to face Cage. They are not going to strip him of his title. They are oh. going to let him get healthy. They're going to let him hold it. Yep. And um, so, so yeah, Callahan's not happy about that. He's got to wait, but what are you going to do? We are getting Ken Shamrock versus Moose at Bound for Glory. That's crazy. Cute. Just to think about that that's happening in 2019. I ne never would have expected that. Unbelievable. You know? I'm very excited to see, in fact, uh, Ken Shamrock's, I forget what it's called, Fists of Valor, Valor something. It's happening in a few days, yeah. 21st. And that's his show. That's his gig. That's the, the bare-knuckle fighting champ, uh, whatever his, his deal is. Yeah. It's his new baby. So, yeah, interesting. 
I don't know if he's in it, but that's what he's promoting. He's promoting it. I don't know if he's doing it, but he's promoting it. He shouldn't be in it. I wouldn't <laughs> think so. Say, save yourself for movies. I mean, he's, Ken's 54? How old is Ken? I don't know, man, but he looks half that age. His yeah. face looks aged. His voice sounds aged. His body looks ridiculous. Oh, he's jacked. He's jacked. Oh, my. He's the first champion of, of that company, the TNA, right? He was the first champion. Let's not forget that. WA, TNA, yep. I, saw, I, I watched that show, Jay. I watched it. He took on Malice, who was formerly known as The Wall from WCW. And that final match was a great match. But anyway, go on. Is that who that was? Malice was The Wall. He grew his hair out. That's all it was. I was when I was watching that. I was like, "Who is that guy?" He looked a little familiar. I could not recognize. Grew his hair out a little thicker, um, but he was the wall who accompanied Alex Wright for a little bit. Went during Alex Wright's uh, the um, the gimmick he did with, which was uh shit. What the hell was that gimmick he did? The really, the really like. Goose step in type of character he did. It wasn't a Nazi. Well, he was like he was like uh he was like the, the scary German guy for a little bit, but then he was also uh the dancing We did that, but the German the real a uh, super German character <laughs> when he Yeah. I thought it was let's tell a sidebar. I thought it was cool. It it looked cool. But it just it scared a lot of people off, you know. It was it I mean it bordered on Goddamn Nazism and shit. So yeah, because it looked real cold. Yeah, people were so, a little yeah. Berlin. That's what it was, Berlin. Berlin. So, yeah, was, it, I remember that. It was cool. I thought it had something to it, you know. And I now that you say Berlin, the yeah, look was that. fucking cool. Oh, the look. Yeah, but I think I dug it. It was it was like it was like pre Matrix. Yeah, and the look was cool, yeah. but I think people just immediately because he's German, it went to Nazi stuff. But the wall was the bodyguard. The wall was Malice, who lost to Ken Shamrock. Side That's little trivia. Crazy! I did not know that. June nineteenth, twenty o two. Man, I was there. Oh, out there, I was watching it live. Got it on VHS. Still VHS that... taped. <laughs> Go ahead. Get out the VCR for that one. I got two VCRs we, right here. I swear to God. Got... <laughs> you know how many rest, how much oh wrestling I got on tape? I can't put it on DVD. I have a VCR. I got two. I used to dub tapes, Jay. You know what that's about. I used to dub tapes and trade them. I was a fucking nut. <laughs> I got stuff you can't find anywhere. That's why I got to have the VCR. Anyway, go on. That's, that is incredible. Who else owns a VCR? Else... Leave me a comment. <laughs> I probably got about five of them buried in a closet somewhere. Mine are still plugged in. Not working. <laughs> Not working. We've got Elgin versus Marafuji. Very excited about Talked that Talked about one. that earlier, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see the buildup on that. Because first it was, oh, Marafuji's showing up. Oh, that's great. What's he doing? Oh, Elgin. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And last but certainly not least, just announced, we've got the Rascals. All three of them, Dez, Tr uh, uh, Trey, and Wentz. I almost said Trents. Oh, my God. Trents. <laughs> the, the, yeah, just put them all together. There's a smoke room uh, in here. <laughs> yes. Rascals versus Dr. Wagner Jr. and two partners of his choosing. Let one of them be Vikingo, please. That kid needs to come to the U.S. That... I would say Vikingo and Golden Magic. That's my picks. Let's get him in here. Vikingo for sure. That kid needs to be in the United States at least once. Let's do it. So, we'll see. But, Jay, that will do it for us. That's Bound for Glory so far. And also, Jay, appearing the night before Bound for Glory is my band, Hemi, performing live at All Glory. Come see us at All Glory. But, Hell yeah. But uh, get your tickets now. That's going to be a great show. All right, Jay, let's get the plugs in here. Let's let's start off looping with the plugs, personal. I'll do personal, then we'll do show, and then we'll get the hell out of here. All right, personal, you can find me over on the Twitter box at jbone5150. That's J-A-Y-B-O-N-E 5150. 50, I'll try to do it quick. 5150. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the Van Halen yeah. thing. I don't know. So, <laughs> and then plug the new, the new podcast. Where can they find that? 
the new podcast, J-Bone's Jacked Up Jukebox. You can find that over on anchor.fm forward slash smash this podcast. Uh, and Twitter. The home of the, and, yes, and the brand new Twitter, J-Bone's at J-Bone's Jukebox. It is the audio version of smash this podcast with a music theme to it it's go. all about my love of music uh things i find in the music world uh cd releases reviews um uh, mostly pertaining to classic rock some modern rock and then maybe some other odd stuff thrown in there for good mix whatever tickles my fancy in the world of music yes. um first episodes out there you can also support the show if you like the link is there at anchor uh dot fm just go to smash this podcast and you'll find all the information there smash this podcast is also found at youtube that other little youtube channel over there uh facebook instagram for smash this podcast twitter and Anything else? You guys I cover I all the main things. <laughs> if I make up another social media, I think my brain's going to leak it out of my head. So, yeah, I think that's it for a while. All right, so let me let me jump in here and get some of the plugs in here. <laughs> guys, personal, you can find me at Vanilla Joke, Instagram and Twitter. Vanilla Joke, find me there. My band, Hemi, Hemi Music, H-E-M-I-M-U-S-I-C, Hemi Music, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Give us a follow. We have done two songs for Impact Wrestling this year, Decay for Rebellion, Avalon Averted, the Fixer Remix for Bound for Glory. It's in the commercials. Uh, we are invited. We are playing the All Glory event on October 19th, the night before Bound for Glory. It's a dream come true for me. Uh, we're playing that short, special set of songs. So join us there, guys. If you're in town for Bound for Glory, come to All Glory. Check us out. Uh, so give us a follow on all those social medias, please. Don't forget also, guys, this show is available on social media at We Talk Impact on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Just type in We Talk Impact. Connect with us on those. Let us know. And let's not forget, we are backed by the Impact Lounge, the number one source of Impact Wrestling talk, discussion, and news, led by the Captain BQ himself. Daily updates have been coming in. J Bone, he's been doing great. Have you seen the daily updates from J Bone? Uh, from uh, BQ, he's killing it. He's back. BQ is on. BQ is back in the game. He is on fire. On fire. Uh, he's putting out some good produced content. Break uh, news. Uh, nice little jingles in the background. Um, upbeat stuff. The covers are good. The covers. Let me tell you, the covers are so good. People are ripping people off are his stealing covers. Them. They're stealing the art. Oh my god, it's hilarious. I was fighting with one of the guys. He's like, "Well, I, it was on." Uh, it was on Google, so it's fair game. I was like, no, it's not. Why would the guy took BQ's artwork? Yep. Put it up, and it says Impact Lounge. And I said, why wouldn't you want your own? And the guy's like, well, I just Googled it. I'm not profiting off of it. I'm like, it says Impact Lounge on it. You know, I credited the Impact. I'm like, why wouldn't you want your own? Idiotic. Um, they're an Impact somewhat channel, that's, that's, but it was so ridiculous. stupid. I said, be original. Come original, man. But um, he's just trying to get himself. Yeah, away. it's all it was. But whatever. Hey, he can't beat the original. The original is the Impact Lounge. BQ killing it. That's right. We're on there too. There's some more surprises. I talked to BQ today. Things in the works. Lots going on with the Impact Lounge. If you haven't subscribed yet, connect to the Impact Lounge on YouTube and RSS feeds, iTunes, Stitcher, all that stuff too. So look up the Impact Lounge. We are also featured on there. Our show, Total Nonstop Impact, is also cross posted to Impact Lounge stuff. But. Don't forget, guys, Total Nonstop Impact has its own feed. So with the, that the weekly review show can be found under Total Nonstop Impact at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Player.fm, Spotify, YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel, but it's a cross-post. Exclusives, I swear, promise, are coming. j Bone and I have had a busy couple weeks. The winter's coming up. Winter is coming. We're going to be indoors more. We live in the goddamn Midwest. I swear to you, we'll probably do daily updates on that damn channel when there's 18 <laughs> inches of snow out there and nobody wants to go outside because we live in the goddamn Midwest. We thought somehow that was a good idea. So when we're not going outside, we're going to do daily updates right on this camera right here. So coming, we're going to pump up that I channel. Won't, I won't be as tantalizing. So yeah, yeah. I won't be as tantalizing, but wait till next week. You're going to be something else. <laughs> but, guys, 
Follow us on all the socials. Follow us on the on the other feeds. Rate, review, subscribe. We need your ratings. Now, Jay, I told you earlier today, we are charting on iTunes internationally. Oh, more and more ridiculous. and more. Um, so our, to our listeners. I can't believe it. The ones that stuck out. Now, we have a lot of listeners in the U.K. I know that. Our, I love the U.K. listeners. You guys are amazing. We were told today that we're charting in in the newest one, Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Germany. Yeah. So, guys, the Luxembourg. The motherland. Oh, sorry. Luxembourg. <laughs> Luxembourg <German>. listeners. <laughs> well, you are from Wisconsin. That is that is German. That is German town over there. But, um, guys, yeah, cool. guys the <laughs> new list people over in Europe. Oh, my God. Thank you guys so much. Also, Jay, Cambodia, Sierra Leone, Vietnam. Are, are, these are some of our biggest markets next to the U.K. Speechless. Guy, every week our numbers from these countries are strong. It's blowing our minds. We're charting iTunes and some of these random uh, places that we never thought were reaching. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Glad that Impact Wrestling is interesting out there enough that you're checking on with us every week. So keep the brand growing. That's, that that says something about the international fans that they're watching Impact Wrestling Absolutely. and they're interested in in shows. Yes. Good shows. Oh, not not to toot my own horn, but to, if we're charting, if we're charting, I'll call ourselves good. I'm not gonna say we're the best. Like, like or but be I'll, like Ortiz. We're the best. We're the best. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's very exciting. It's very humbling. Yeah. And I I I still I say it to Trent all the time. It's a, just to be a part of this. It just makes me feel like a million bucks. Yeah, and, you uh, guys are awesome, man. It's, it's tremendous. All the comments, the guy. I mean, we would have gone. Well, oh, so I wanted to throw this out there to everybody. We've decided, guys, that we're gonna do live every other week. That'll give us enough yeah. time. That'll keep it special. We'll be able to build up to it. We'll give you guys enough heads up. So you'll know every other week we're going live. This is pre-taped. Now we'll do is we'll, we'll line up a guest. We'll have one of our listeners come on like we did with Cody. Uh, Colby, I'm sorry, Colby came on. We want to do it again. We're we'll trying to get Hakeem Forth and uh, Mir Needs. we got all these regulars who have been there since day one. We want to get all you guys on at some point. Not just, not just to call it a few names. We want to get a lot of you guys on. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to have a week to build up the live, get some more content, make it a bigger, bigger party, have a set time. Say at this time, this day that you know we're gonna go live, so everybody can prep for it. So we'll be doing that every other week. So next week, guys, we'll be live. That's the promise. We'll be live next week. Uh, Kyle, who knows? <laughs> we don't know. Kyle's Kyle is literally Jay, that icon on the iPhone that goes like this. That's that's, that's how I look at. Him. <laughs> so who knows? Kyle is a is an anomaly, but when he shows up, it's Scum City, and people get excited. So. The ratings, yes. the ratings jump when Kyle's here, so hopefully he's on. But that's going to do it, Jay. Anything else? Did we miss anything? No, I think we covered it all, man. We covered the little news bits. Um, I do plan on reviewing the shows in one way or another. I have not discussed it with Trent to see if we want to throw some of that on the original channel just for new content mm -hmm. we'll we'll figure it out we'll figure it out it's we've been very busy lately i didn't catch any of the shows yet but one way or another the shows are going to get reviewed in the soon to near future so we'll catch the operation override almost said operation dumble drop i and the uh victory road reviews will be coming there soon. you go sounds good jay thank you very much guys thanks for listening remember rate review subscribe Get your Bound for Glory tickets. They're almost gone. If you don't have them, get them quick. They're almost done. All right, guys. We will be there. We'll be there for sure. I got tickets sitting on the table right behind me. They're sitting right there. Guys, thanks again. We'll talk to you again next week. We're going to go live. Remember, connect on the socials. Be in touch with us. Leave us your comments, feedbacks. You want it all. Let us know what you want. And, Jay, say goodbye because we're out of here. See ya. See ya, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>